What is a hazardous material and what threats do they pose? In this video, we'll learn from some of the experts on how to prepare for, respond to, and recover from a hazardous material or hazmat incident. A hazardous material is a substance, either solid liquid gas or energy, that when released can cause harm to you, your family, animals, or the environment, either by itself or through interaction with other factors. Hazardous materials are found everywhere. They're used every day to purify our drinking water, simplify our household chores, or in routine medical treatments. But they can also present serious threats to people in the environment if released. So I'm here with RB at the Air Force Civil Engineer Center at Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida. RB, what exactly is a hazardous material? A hazardous material is any type of substance, whether it's a liquid, solid, or vapor, that releasing to the environment poses a serious hazard to um, personnel, animals, and property. So we use these items to simplify our household chores, maybe even in routine medical treatments? Uh, yes, you, you are correct. Um, a lot of folks are not aware how much hazardous materials they have in their own homes. Now, if we have a hazardous incident, why would it be so serious? What makes a hazardous material so uh, serious is the fact it can happen anytime, anywhere. In fact, most people are not aware there's actually 4.5 million facilities in the United States that either manufacture, use some type of hazardous substance. 4.5 million, I had no idea. And it's scary because, again, most of us live in our community not too far from an actual facility that contains large quantities of hazardous materials. Now, they're everywhere, but when are we most vulnerable? Typically, we're most vulnerable with two scenarios. One, if it's actually being stored at a facility and there's an accident, and for example, there might be a fire, which then can release toxic chemicals into the environment. The other one is typically during transport. One of the most uh, significant or unique scenarios would be a rail tanker car actually transporting a large quantity of hazardous materials and it derails, which poses a significant threat to the environment, and again, like I said earlier, to our personnel, animals, and also damage to property. So I imagine there's a good likelihood that someone in the Air Force or their family could come in contact with an incident like this. Now, if we're thinking about safety, what considerations should we take? One thing to consider about safety, especially if you come into a new community, make sure you're aware of the warning systems, also be familiar with surroundings. In other words, are there any type of facility that actually store or manufacture chemicals in my area? Also, if you come into a new, for example, new Air Force installation, what I highly recommend, stop by your emergency management flight and have great material that they can provide to you. And one of the things they're going to talk to you about, for one, is actually the warning systems. It's very important that we understand not what the warning, what the warning systems tells you, but what actions we need to take. Also, make sure of an emergency, a family emergency plan. Make sure we understand it and our children also understand it. Part of the plan includes communication and also includes rally points. Also, very important, we must have an emergency kit. Know what's inside of it and how to use it. And last but not least, we have to know our evacuation routes because part of it is understanding those protective actions. When they're told to take uh, evacuation um, procedures, you have to know where to go and how to get there. That plan sounds like it's key. Yes, Matt, everything about life is plan, plan, plan. We've learned a lot about hazardous materials and the dangers they could pose to our communities. I'm here at Tech Sergeant Mendiola's home where she's gonna show us some ways we can protect ourselves. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, thank you for having me over. Oh, you're welcome. RB and I were talking about hazardous materials. He mentioned there are some things I can do to protect myself, my family, and my pets if there were ever to be an incident. Yes, there are. Let's go in the kitchen and we can talk about those key things. The first thing you need to know is your evacuation route, as well as the emergency communication plan, ha making sure that all members of your household know where the pre-designated shelter location is within your house, as well as having an emergency supply kit. I see you've got a lot of supplies here to show me. Yes. What is the most important thing to have in my kit? The most important thing for your kit, I'm going to say, is the water. You want to make sure that you have one gallon of water per person for three to five days. And if you look at the um, water bottles that we have right here, this case of 24, it's basically about three gallons of water. So that'll last one person about three to five days. Yes. Food here as well, I know you can go a lot longer without food, but I imagine it's important to have food that will store for quite a while. Yes, it is, and you want to make sure when you do have those canned food items that you do also have a manual can opener. 
If the power goes out, how else are you going to open them? I see yeah. flashlights, batteries here, I imagine, for the power as well. A lot of us don't have a radio like this, though. Why is this important? You want to make sure that you can turn tune into your local news channels and make sure that you know what those news channels are because some people don't actually listen to the news on this type of radio to begin with. So you want to make sure that you do know what channels to actually tune into. That would be a good way to get information. I see first aid kit, even some prescription drugs. Yes, everyone's kit's going to be a little bit different. Some people do take prescription pills, others don't. Um, some people do have pets, so you, know, you might have some supplies for your pet in here. Um, also, if you have children, you might want to throw some things in there for your children just to kind of keep them busy. You also have a cell phone with a charger. With your cell phone, you want to make sure that you do have emergency contact phone numbers. So local hospitals, poison control, things of that nature for your situation. Is there anything else that would be important for hazmat incidents? Yes, your shelter in place kit. So what does it mean to shelter in place? Well, the living room is not an ideal location for a shelter in place room. You would typically use an interior room with little to no windows, but we have this out here so we can show you exactly what you're going to use with your shelter in place kit. Now, this is just plastic and tape, very yes, simple. It is. So, what do I do with this tape? You just go ahead and seal this. You're going to seal the door or the window completely. And this is to keep as little air as possible from coming inside. You also want to make sure that you lock and close all of your windows. But what about your air conditioner and heater? I know that can let in some outside air. You want to make sure that you also turn those off. What are some other things I should consider? What if I'm not even, what if I'm not at home? If you're not at home and you're in your vehicle, you want to see if maybe you can seek shelter in a structure. And if that's not possible, you want to make sure your windows are rolled up and also your heater or AC are turned off as well. So the key things for a hazmat situation is that supply kit with a lot of water and this shelter in place tools, the plastic and the tape. Yes. Thank you for these tips. These have been so good. You've given me a lot to think about. I have learned a lot of information about hazardous materials, but I still have a few more questions. So I am back here at AFCAC to talk to RB about what would happen if I got one of those materials on me. If you're exposed to the hazardous material, it's very important that you immediately contact your local authorities and receive decontamination procedures. Also, based on the hazmat material, you're either going to be told decontaminate with water, or if the material is, it does not react well with water, you'll be told not to and given other procedures for you to remove the substance off your body. Interesting that you would either use water or not. How will I know that I have got one of those hazardous materials on me? What are the signs and symptoms? Again, excellent question. Depending on the chemical uh, or the hazardous material, there are a multitude of different symptoms. But typically you'll feel, for example, um, irritation of the skin, the eyes, difficulty breathing, uh, sore throat. Uh, also, you can feel cramps and diarrhea. The key thing on, on, on this issue is that if you feel these symptoms immediately, and I cannot stress that word, immediately seek medical attention and let them know what's going on and what are you feeling. So likely the emergency room or a hospital? Yes, definitely. I, uh, again, if you can call them, call them, if not, have somebody immediately rush you to, to the emergency room, but also it's very important to let somebody know what you experience that you have to come in contact with some type of hazardous material. Now we always want to help people when we see them in pain. Is it okay? Is it safe for us to help someone? Again, it's human nature for us to rush in and help somebody who, who's hurt or down or injured. But when it comes to a hazmat incident, it's very important you do not touch that victim or that patient unless local authorities have told two things. Local authorities have determined what the material is and they have actually allowed individuals to go in and assist. Now, when you do help somebody, here's some key things you must do. One, remove that individual from the area. Make sure they get plenty of fresh air, plenty of water if you know what the material is and you can use water. Flush, it, flush their body with water, remove their clothing and put it in a plastic bag and report the information to a medical facility. Very good tips to protect that person as well as yourself. But what if we have to evacuate? When can we go home? I, again, this is one thing I want to get out to everybody. We must practice patience. I know what it is, you, you, you want to be back, you want to get out, you want to go, but here's the thing. We have to make sure that it all clear has been announced, which indicates that it's safe to evacuate. Also, when you do evacuate, you have to be aware of your surroundings because if something is still present, some type of hazardous material, it's very important that you identify that. Get back inside, call your local uh, emergency services, and let them know what you saw and report it. So know your surroundings, be patient, it's all for your own good. Thank you, RV. Thank you very much.
Hopefully this information has helped you better prepare for what to do before, during and after a hazmat incident. For more information, please visit your installation's Office of Emergency Management and the Be Ready website. You can also download the Be Ready app for your mobile device. I'm Caitlin Lawrence for the Emergency Management Division of the Air Force Civil Engineer Center. Stay safe and be ready.